see from the outside because man looks upon the count uh, upon our countenance. But God judges everything upon the heart because he knows what it said. It depends on what your head is or who your head is. Rosh in Hebrew head is, is one of the descriptions of the Messiah. He is the beginning and the end, the Rosh and so forth. So what you say and what you do it depends uh, on the outside, depends upon what seed or what, what you're following on the inside. Now, I suggest to you that if, for example, uh, Allah is your head, Allah, then you will fly planes into towers. That's what you'll do. You'll fly planes into the tower. Um, unless you believe the government did it, and that's a whole other story. But nonetheless, if that's who your head is. However, if Yeshua, the Messiah, is your head, then that will determine everything you say and everything you do will be based upon Him because He is what lies in your heart. See, the things we're doing on the outside is based upon what's going on on the inside. And so that's why, as we go back to our slide now, that's why it's important to uh, see what the words mean when we take them back to uh, their meaning in the very beginning. We also know, for example, that leaves have veins. Now, leaves is an agricultural term, and but yet we, we know that leaves have veins. Now, Isaiah, yes, Yahu in the Hebrew here, Isaiah 14, verse 29 says, Rejoice not thou, ho Palestina. Because the rod of him that smote you is broken, and for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a descendant of a serpent, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Now notice, notice this verse. Notice, first of all, that it says, Rejoice not, whole Palestina. Now that English word Palestina, we, there's two very uh, familiar words that we all use that's the basis of that in Hebrew. That is the Philistines and currently the so-called Palestinians and so forth. Now the word, both of those words, Philistine and Palestinians, both come from the Hebrew root, root palash. Palash means an illegal immigrant. Palash means an illegal immigrant, if you will, an invader also. Palash means an invader. And so now we know the background, not only of the Philistines uh, historically, but once again, since God teaches things cyclically, which we discussed before, here we are in our day dealing with the same kind of a concept of an invader. Now, why is that important? Because we see that that's also an agricultural term. We'll talk later about parasites and things like that from an agricultural way that invade. Locusts that invade the fruit of the land and eat all the fruit of the land. And we'll get into that in a later program. Now, notice the concept of like kind begets like kind. We are the branches because we preserve and follow the branch. And our root is the Messiah and our seed is the Messiah. And so we produce the same fruit that he did. Notice the same is true with the enemy, the, his fruit. Notice in this verse that it says, Out of the serpent's root shall come forth a descendant of a serpent. Now in your King James English there it says cockatrice. I've translated it more closely as to what it is in Hebrew. There it is, Safa which is a serpent because most people in our culture don't know what a cockatrice is, but the descendant of a, serpent's, uh, of a serpent's root will be a serpent, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So you can see consistently the laws of like kind here, even through this verse. Now, in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2, it says, In that day shall the branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. In that day shall the branch of Yahweh. Now, once again, the branch of Yahweh is speaking of the Messiah, comparing him to a branch. Now, this word branch is not Natsar. This word is Tzamak, Tzamak. And Tzamak happens to also be the Hebrew word for vegetables. Vegetables. So the Messiah is compared to a, the branch of a tree, for example, and happens to be the Hebrew word for 
vegetables. Now, why is even that significant at all? Because one of the things I want you to notice when you read your text in Genesis all the way through uh, Revelation in things that are describing the wheat or the pure uh, preservers of the word of God and the Messiah, because we are the body of the Messiah. You'll notice that it's always clean things that are associated with the Messiah. All the things that God in the beginning called clean are, are, are terminology used for the Messiah and his followers throughout Scripture as well. I hate to be irreverent uh, uh, here, but the reality is you will notice that as you read the Bible, Yeshua, our Savior, is never called the ham sandwich of God. He's never called the main lobster of the Lord. Okay? He's never called the pork chop of God, if you catch my drift, because those are unclean things. And, and the, one of the main differences between vegetables and fruit and flowers is, and human beings is that those things are instinctively whatever God called them in the beginning is what they are. They don't have a choice. Pigs don't have a choice. You see, unclean things, food, it, any kind of food has no choice to be what it was called to be. God never comes in and changes the food. What he changes is people's hearts because human beings, distinct from all the rest of creation, are infused with the ability to be able to turn their hearts toward the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and serve him rather than the gods that they've been serving or rather than serving themselves. And so the fundamental difference between humans and, 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 and animals and plants is that we are given choice. But once, once a hamburger is a hamburger, it stays a hamburger. Now, men currently are trying to manipulate the things of creation with genetically modified foods and so forth. And some of you know what I'm talking about. But, but the reality is, is that God never changed anything unclean and then made it clean. Now, how do I know that? Look outside the window. That's the way it operates. It's people that change. That's why when you read in Acts chapter 10, the story of Peter and the vision of the sheet, you'll notice that the vision he gives to Peter, he falls into a trance, he gives him a vision of all kinds of clean and unclean things mixed in a sheet. And how does Peter respond to that? He says, not so, I have never eaten anything unclean. Do you notice what Peter said, for example? I have never eaten anything unclean. He didn't rise up and eat anything. He just did not understand why God gave him the vision. Ultimately, later on in the book of, uh, of Acts chapter 10, God's going to tell them that what I was trying to show you, Peter, and all of us that are reading the text, what I'm trying to show you is I have made Cornelius clean. So don't call him un, uh, common or unclean anymore. See, humans, God can change. And he's given him that image in the vision of the sheet. Now, now notice that Peter says, not so, I have never eaten in anything unclean. Now, what does that also tell you at that time? That Yeshua, uh, Peter was with Yeshua for three, three and a half years, was he not? So what does that mean up to that point? That Yeshua and the disciples never ate anything unclean. If, there was, if, 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 if the Messiah came to change the, the, the dietary laws, this was a perfect opportunity to sit down with his gang and, you know, gnaw down on a ham and cheese sandwich at some point. But you see, Peter's revealing to us, we've never eaten anything unclean. Why? Unclean is unclean. Spirit is spirit. Flesh is flesh. And that's a very simple thing that we don't have to argue with in abstract theology, we can see how God has already revealed to that, uh, that to us as a second witness right out in the things growing in our field. So once again, the Messiah is called the branch of, of Yahweh. Now you'll notice also in Devarim or Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 18, the disobedient, I'm not going to read this whole verse because we'll get going here, the disobedient are compared to gall and wormwood. Now those are some very f some familiar terms when you get to the New Testament as well. Those who are disobedient are compared to gall and wormwood. It's also true that language is diagrammed by trees and each language is a branch. Now notice that when we study languages, we take them and put them on a language tree. 
that we, you, you have the main language and then you have the branches of that language. See, see, Ivrit being the main language and then you have Akkadian and Ugaritic and you have Arabic and you have Aramaic, which are branches or sisters of the original uh, proto sinaitic or proto Canaanite uh, tongue. And so we put them in a language tree when we're dealing with that. Now, when we take people, when you trace back your family tree, what do we put it on? I just said it. A tree. We put it on a family tree. Now, also, with respect to agriculture, we have uh, various uh, trees used in agriculture because that's what a tree is. It's an agricultural object. But it's also used with family. That's biology. And also used with words. That's not just a coincidence. We also know that the backbone is called the tree. Chiropractors call the backbone in your body the tree. Why do they call it that? Because everything hangs on those bones in your body or that tree or that backbone. Now, the word for backbone in Hebrew, it's etzem, chetzem. Notice that the word chetzem, E-T-Z-E-M, is based upon etz, the tree. Even the word for bones in Hebrew, the basis of it is once again taken back to a tree. And so it's no coincidence that the bones of a man, the backbone especially, is called a tree by those who deal with bones in your body as well. I also submit to you, we talked about the bees earlier and the relationship between words and bees and so forth. We also know, we talked about rosh, the head of here, which is the, at the heart of the Hebrew word for fruit. It's not just a man's head, but it's also, we use it in Hebrew to describe the head word of a letter. When we write a letter, there's a head, head word. So at the top, we call it the head of the letter. Now there's your grammar. Now we have the head, there's your biology. And, of course, we also talk about the fruit of the wheat is called the head. And so it's also used agriculturally as well. So these things are not coincidental. And we're going to continue in this series to keep talking about these wonderful pictures, this relationship, this synonymous relationship, if you will, and symbiotic, all working together in everything that we see of words, Language, which is what your Bible is written in. Biology, the things we see in our, in our bodies and the things out growing in the field. And so when we meet again, we will continue to talk about this. In the meantime, cling to your roots that your days may be long and that you will prosper in everything you set your hand to do. We'll see you next time. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom, this is Brad Scott with the Wild Branch Ministry, and I hope this series of programs, you've been able to see that there's wonderful treasures in your biblical text to be found through this beautiful language that it was written in from Genesis to Revelation. I hope we can clearly see that the end is revealed right out of the beginning. And once again, there's nothing new in your New Testament. It's just true. And I hope we continue to learn these beautiful treasures as we go through these programs. If you want to contact us, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can write us at the Wild Branch Ministry or Brad Scott at P.O. Box 97, Vernal, Utah, 84078. Or you can email us at brad at wildbranch.org. Our website is www.wildbranch.org. Org. It's a really simple website. In the meantime, cling to your roots that your days may be long and that you will prosper in everything you set your hand to do. Shalom Aleichem. This program was produced by and for God's Learning Channel. If you enjoy this program, we need your support to keep this program on GLC. Please make your checks out to God's Learning Channel, P.O. Box 61000, Midland, Texas 79711-1000. Please be sure to designate where your contribution is intended. It is very important to let GLC know which programs you enjoy and support.